Hello, people. Did you miss me? Well, it's good to be back. Now, for your host. He is now a triple threat in the social media. Just ask him, he'll tell you. After reading this week's Amazing Spider-Man, he was left with a what-the-fuck moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Mount Vernon King. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> how's everybody doing out there? Um, first and foremost, Mr. O, Mr. Orpheus, it is good to have you back, bro. Good to have you back. Uh, how's everybody doing out there? Mom Vernon Kitty coming to you again. Hope everybody had a very safe holiday. Um, whether you celebrate Thanksgiving or not. Um, but other than that, hope everybody had a very safe holiday. And to please your appetites for my comic lovers and my comic fans out there, I'm here to deliver, yes, read the title, a giant size edition um, for last week's books. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. Um, this week was loads of fun. I have a lot of books to cover for you guys. Um, a lot of books. Now, Mr. Orpheus heard, you heard Mr. Orpheus say, um, I'm a triple threat on the social media. Uh, <laughs> what he meant by that, guys, is now I am on Twitter, I am on Facebook, and I am on Tumblr now. Um, still finding my my niche on Tumblr, but, um, it's been a lot of fun, but, uh, but like I said, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun indeed, so, as always, let's get into this comics, because I got a lot, so sit back and relax, dudes, because it's gonna be one hell of a ride, <laughs> so let's, uh, kick it off, shall we? Right, we're gonna kick it off with Valiant Entertainment. I kept saying Valiant and Comics, but they call themselves Valiant Entertainment now. And the first and the only book that I picked up, X Exo Man of War number seven. Uh, Robert uh, Vertinelli is uh, Vertinet Vert did Teddy is. Is still doing a very good job on this book. Um, it is, it is, it is probably the, the what what they say down at the bottom is not probably is not just one of Valiant's best books. It's it it is it is it is very good. This is a very good book. So pretty much now we get a little bit more in depth into what the Vine want and how long the Vine has been on Earth looking for the armor. Um. They have been on Earth so long, they have had children with humans or so. They've had disguised themselves as humans, had children, had hybrid kids, and they have used them as lookouts so they can find the armor. Because they've always known that it would come to the present. Um, and one, But not all the hybrid kids, you know, like, want to, you know, rule Earth and everything like that. They just want to live their lives out, pretty much. And one of them that Auric and Ninjak have is one of them. Ninjak and Ninjak was hired by some of those hybrids to retrieve the armor. But now they realize that let's call a truce and let's get down to the bottom of this. And the first place they're going to stop at is none other than uh, MI6 in England because uh, one of the hybrids is actually a high official in that organization and they're gonna get some answers that's where you see them outside of MI 13 I'm I'm, I'm I 6 excuse me I'm thinking of Marvel <laughs> but yeah um, Valiant Comics uh, Exo, Exo Man of War still good okay so we move on to IDW and the first one 
we're gonna pick up talk about is uh Judge Dredd. Yeah. Judge Dredd number one. Um IDW and AD Comics. AD have merged have uh, come together to bring Judge to the to the states. Remember, Judge Dredd is a UK character and a very good one at best. Um Dwayne Swarzynski does a very good job at reintroducing those who are not familiar with Judge Dredd to those people. Not me, but um, he does a very good job of telling a pretty solid and interesting story of Judge Dredd, and I was really impressed by it. Um, it made you feel as if Dwayne made you feel as if you knew Judge Dredd already. We we knew him. We just needed maybe a little bit of a of a of a background story, a little bit of of what is you know Mega City One and everything like that. What did the judges do? Everything like that in terms of their weapons and everything like that. And who was the best out of the judges? But other than that, it was fine. The artwork was pretty good. Um, but other than that, I, I liked it. I very much liked it. Very much. Good stuff. Uh, next up, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Uh, this is number 19. Chuck Dixon still knows what he is doing with the Silent Ninja. Um, as you all know, this book will be coming to an end soon because they're going to relaunch the the, the G.I. Joe series sometime later. Um, so now we so now Storm Shadow knows that Snake Eyes is is was just using the Oroshikage. He was never a part of them, everything like that. Scarlet now knows everybody like that. But um and Storm Shadow wants to hurt now Snake Eyes, but not just him, but some of his friends right now. And of course some of the former masters of the Oroshikage, like the soft master I believe, he still wants his hands on Snake Eyes for what you know, he still wants revenge on Snake Eyes. And, of course, you know, with Cobra and everybody still wants to just wipe out the entire of Chicago's, you know, Serpator and all of them just wants to wipe it out pretty much. But still a very good solid issue. Chuck Dixon still does a very good job. And uh, not bad. Uh, nice cover, though. Okay. So we move on to... Dynamite, baby. Dynamite. I have a couple of Dynamite comics for you. All that I say, if you've never tried it, give it a try. Dynamite knows what they're doing with the pulp characters. And first off, I'm going to kick it off with the Bionic Man number 14. Nice cover by Alex Ross, if you could see that. Um, This is the more this is the more um we're getting more in depth into the the bigfoot phenomena you know basically and what he really is what and what they've done to him and his race um his race is they're not called bigfoot or sasquatch anymore. they're called something else but a, a russian uh, organization uh pretty much captured his race and just mutilated them by putting biotic parts in them and made them stronger, faster. Um, and unfortunately, one of them was able to, has found Steve, Steve Austin here, uh, and was able to communicate with him at first. At first, Steve didn't know how to react to it because he, he all here was buzzing. But now they, they can talk to each other pretty much. And they, they, Steve has helped, Steve has gone on to help him find his race, his his baby, his you know, and everything like that, and, and his 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 uh, mate, and put an end to this genocide, pretty much. Um, but other than that, it was just a fun, very good uh, story. The endings left on a cliffhanger, which I don't want to spoil. You know me, guys. I'm not going to spoil too much, but it was a very, very, very good story indeed. And um, Bionic Man has still been doing good. X 
Next up, The Shadow, number eight. I love that cover right there. Badass cover. Nice cover, right? All right. Um, so now The Shadow is in... This is the first uh, part of the four-part story, Revolutionary. And uh, Lamont Cranston and his pilot are in Paris. And uh, in Paris, they're, they're just <laughs> lounging around at first, you know. But we do know there's something wrong with the Shadow's mystical powers. He can't read people as easy as he used to be able to do and read into their heart and their soul like he, he's always been. Um, but Lamont gets, uh, the Shadow gets mixed up in uh, a civil war between, I believe, I'm forgetting what country, but... Remember, this takes place in the 1930s, so, uh, but uh, other than that, it was still a good story. Um, the Shadow, he was trying to read this woman, but he still couldn't do it, and he's still trying to figure out what is, why are my, my abilities not working as well as they used to? And uh, he, he gets mixed up, and he wants to help certain people and things like that, but uh, other than that, it was just really good. The first part of the first uh, four-part story arc of Revolutionary, but um, Dynamite has still been doing very good on Shadow as well. Like I said, the Pope characters are where to go for, for Dynamite. Alright, and uh, next up, this is a book that I got two of my friends on. One of them is my mentor. Uh, Blue Goblin. Check out his channel. Uh, and that is none other than The Spider. Number six, uh, David List and Colton Worley. First of all, like I've always said, Colton Worley's artwork is fantastic in this book. It's, it's that, like my mentor said, noir, gritty look, but it's very nice for a book like this as well as you know just showing that kind of darkish feel to it being somewhere in a big city like where the, where the spider is takes place in New York New York City um, but David List still does a fantastic job on this book so the shadow is now we're introduced now we get a little bit backstory into uh, Richard's Richard Wentworth the spider into his days when he was in the military. You see what he was and everything like that, and some things that went on in, in as his time in the military. Uh, then we fast forward to the present, and we see that there's a new, there's some new honcho in town known as the Wingman, I believe. And he's, he's it's kind of crazy, because he's got, he's got psychic abilities, he can control birds and he's killing birds you know he's using the birds pigeons and things like that to kill people to send a message when you cross the wingman no matter what organization you are this is what's going to happen to you and it's up to the spider to find out who he is and uh yeah it's been good spider been a hell of a good book um this is just a good book man i, I can't say any more about it Uh, Pete Cannon, Thunderbolt, um, number three. So, uh, Pete Cannon, Peter Cannon is at the mercy of this man. He's in Japan. He's at the mercy of the guy called Master Tiger. If you can see him right there, this guy right there. And Master Tiger is accusing Pete Thunderbolt here of exploiting you know, the teachings of the, of the scrolls and everything that Pete Cannon learned under by the, at, at the monastery that he, he was raised under. And he's going to try to kill him for it. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't go that way. And uh, that's pretty much it. We get a little bit of backstory into Master Tiger, what he was, everything like that. We also feel that the government wants to kill 
the the this dragon that came out of nowhere that anytime is killed and destroyed nuclear bases everything like that anytime they start because they realize that maybe Thunderbolt has something to do with it um, but once again um, very good entertaining book as always um, this is another book that maybe you're not on or you don't know the character he's another classic character just brought into the modern era a bit but um, still good at, still good at best and um, I've been enjoying it very much okay next up childhood going back to my childhood for anybody out there who is a fellow chill child of the 80s Ultron Number nine, uh, Brandon Thompson Thomas still does a very good job in this. I tip my, my I just tip my head to him. Um, so we realize is that the Voltron Force realizes that there is a, another Voltron unit out there, and it has destroyed the moon. Earth's moon. It destroyed one of the... It said Earth's first moon. Like, I think there's another moon now in the future, but... And then we... Keith, the leader of the Voltron Force, Keith, for all you guys who know who Keith is, he is blaming um... um... Lotor. Uh... Not, not Lotor. Uh... Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I think I'm right. It's Lotor. Um... Correct me. I gotta get the name right, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't rehearse this stuff. Um, uh, yeah, he's Lotor, the son of, uh, you know. Um, after uh, what's his name was killed, the pre Lotor's father was killed. Keith has been on a tirade of doesn't believe Lotor. He's not behind it. He doesn't believe a word Lotor is saying. Uh, Planet Doom is not involved and everything like that. He believes that Doom is involved. Planet Doom is involved. It is behind this new Voltron unit. Everything like that. And Lotor is kind of coming off like the, you know, I have no idea what you're talking about, you know. But I hope you do find out who is doing this, Commander Keith, and everything like that. And, you know, Keith's like, oh, whatever, motherfucker. And like, yeah, right. You know, you, you're behind us. And then all of a sudden, Planet Doom is attacked by that Voltron unit. Now, we don't know who this new Voltron unit is, this second Voltron robot is, but it has five robots, five line robots, just like the original, and it is now targeting both Earth and so we don't know. But the bottom line is Keith is not believing it. Keith does not believe anything that Lotor is saying, and he even tells Lance, another fellow Voltron member, he's lying. And he's, he's lying. His eyes went from right to left, everything like that. He he kept pausing in front of, you know, things like that. And it was still a very good story. Brandon Thompson does a very good job of telling um, this, of telling a good suspenseful piece not a lot of action, but the dialogue in here was very good. Very good indeed. Voltron number nine. Okay, so that is all the independent. Let's, uh, so if you need to take a break, go ahead and take a break right now. Because we're, we're just getting started. Uh, we are moving into Marvel now. And, uh, we're going to kick it off with the first book of... Um, I read this like three times because Dan Slott left me with a what the fuck moment. I didn't know what the hell did I just read and then I read it again and I'm like, no, 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 no. Amazing Spider-Man, world's greatest superhero. Amazing Spider-Man number 698. Two more before the series comes to an end. 
And like I said before in the last review, I might get a little emotional when I review 700, so bear with me on that. Anyway. Pan Slot killing me, man. What the fuck? What the hell, Mr. Slot? What are you doing? <laughs> like, jeez, I'm not even going to spoil this book. All you need to know is what looks like it's going to be just a good old day for Spider-Man. We get a distress call from the raft. The Avengers call Peter until hey, Doc Ock is asking for you. you. Go inside, and that's where I'm going to cut it off right there. You just have to read this book to really understand. I'm not spoiling a damn thing for you. What I read, and I'm just like really scared now, because if that is, oh, I'm sorry. I can't spoil anymore for you guys. But let's just to put it like this. I am scared for my number one all-time hero. Spider-Man. I'm very scared for Peter Parker now, and it's getting me a little bit nervous now, and it is also getting me a little bit nervous of now, maybe my deductions of who the superior Spider-Man in the Spider-Man that's coming in superior is who he really is now. But I'm very, very nervous now, guys. I'm very scared, and um, I'm just scared. I'm really um, but uh, Amazing Spider-Man number six ninety-eight. Pick it up, read it. You'll you'll be well, you'll have the a, a a WTF moment too. I'm telling you right now. Okay. Other than that, we move on to Astonishing X-Men. Uh, uh, number five uh, fifty-six. Mardric Lou. Miss Lou still doing a very good job on this book. I like the cover of uh, my man Bobby Iceman <laughs> paying homage to Gambit. <laughs> Look at him. Um, so the last issue, we we know that the team is in Madripoor, and um, Karma's sister has been using has thinks she thinks she's using the team to take over Madripoor. However, it was all a plan. We thought Iceman had died. No. Um, and uh, we, we find out that the team, nothing is wrong with the team. They, they weren't losing their edge. They weren't having uh, the ascension in the ranks. They were just using Karma's uh, sister, who was really just... All she was really doing is because she had daddy issues. That's pretty much what it is. And we get to see Karma's daddy in this. And, you know, it was kind of crazy. But um, it was still a very good tale. Very good tale. We get some more into... We also get a little side story of um, immigration, I think, coming uh, coming to uh, talk to uh, North Star. They went to go see his, his husband. Um... And they're like, we need to see, you know, Jean-Luc uh, and things like that. You know, it's, it's about, you know, him, his passports and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. But no, um, it still was a very good tale. Um, it ends with karma. Some bad happens to his sister. I'm not going to spoil that is, but it does. It kind of ends on a sweet note for Karma, um, very much. Um, I don't want to spoil it, though, but let's just say something was left for Karma. And, yeah, let's just put it like that. Something was left for her. But uh, Assange Axman, still good. Marjorie Blue, my lady, thank you very much for still telling a very good story. All right, so we'll move on to Bendis' final Avengers book. Avengers number 34. Uh, 
Brian Peterson's artwork was, well, there was a whole lot of artists in this that, you know, from uh, Walter Simonson to Mike Diodata, you know, uh, uh, Leland Yu, you know, you name it. Uh, Alva Copelli, they all were in this book. Um, we, the Avengers deal with uh, Lord Gabar, Go Gojabar, who is like the kingpin of the microverse. Um, and we, they get a little help from none other than Simon Williams. Yeah, uh, Wonder Man comes to their aid. He he is trying to live up to this whole notion of I got a, a retribution. He wants to turn his life around, everything like that. And he comes to their aid and helps out. Um, but and it it ends pretty much. It, this ends really on a happy note because once. They get back to the normal universe, you know, the what they call it, the macro universe. Uh, everybody's reunited with Janet. And she's just like, Booyah Kasha, guess who's back? And everybody's like, like, Janet? And and she's like, Carol, what did you do to your hair? And she's like, I'm Carol's like, I'm I'm working on it. You know, but little did they know. By coming back to the Marvelverse, they brought along. Uh, there was a hitchhiker back with them, in the, the form of Lord Gobar. I think I'm saying his name right. Um, uh, who uh, they fought in the Microverse, and so they got to fight him and get him back in there. But everybody um, just is really pleased to see Janet. Um, and then of course you know uh, there's a ceremony for her, welcome her back. You know, everybody's there, past and present Avengers, and everybody's there just, you know, just get, enjoying and getting together. It was that part of the, the book was uh, drawn by Terry Dobson. Um, and uh, then we see in the background, we see Cap and Tony talking. And uh, Tony's like, are you okay? He's talking to, t t no, no. It's Cap, Steve says to Tony, so how do you feel about Simon being, he's like, I'm okay with it. Like, you know, as long as, you know, things like that. And he's like, I'm more worried about you. You need to get some sleep. And Cap says, I had 70 years to sleep. I don't need it. And he's like, you always use that line. He's like, would you give me a break? I'm a senior citizen. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, but then, then Tony says, but what's really wrong, Steve? And he's like, no matter how many times we, no matter what the Avengers do, there are going to be people that are always going to blame us for things that went wrong and things like that. He's he's understanding that. So he's, he even admits what Simon was saying before that it was true. You know, sometimes we are to blame for things. And he says, so what do we do now? Tony says, I know what we do now. Steve says, what? Tony looks at him, and then they look at all the Avengers in there, and he says, we go bigger. And I guess that rolls into, you know, Hickman uh, Avengers coming up soon, where the team is bigger, the team is bigger, and they're just, they're not going to just be, it, they're going to be universal. Like, they're not just going to stay on Earth. They're going to go interstellar and everything like that, and that's cool. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, Hickman's run. But other than that, I just want to say to Mr. Brian Michael Bendis, um, though, sir, you, you're not, you're old, sometimes you're hitting a miss, but I must give you credit on Avengers. They, they say you took the mediocre Avengers at the past. You took the mediocre Avengers and turned them into something great. Once you wrote, the first thing you wrote, once you brought us Avengers Disassemble, you turned it around. After that, the Avengers went high from there. So I will I will give you credit on that. I do appreciate what you did for Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Um, now it's your your time is done. Now let's see with what Jonathan Hickman can do with the Avengers, because I'm looking forward to that. And the first issue, I can't wait.
to see. But I'm looking forward to seeing this bigger Avengers. Like, this team is 18 members from the start. That's crazy. You know, that's, that's, and the fact that it's not just, there's going to be some mutants on the team. Thank you. Sunspot and my boy Sam Gunthry, Cannonball is going to be on the team. Thank you. Um, but I'm looking forward to Avengers number one when it comes out. But uh, other than that, yeah. All right. So we'll move on to another book from uh, number one issue from Marvel Now. Rick Miranda brings us Captain America number one. Uh, Ramada, Ramada, Ramita, or Ramada, Ramita, um, is the artist on this. All right, this was good. Yeah, um, I was very impressed at what Mr. Remender did. It, he he put the Super Soldier Captain America and meshed it with now sci-fi big time. This is big time sci-fi. This gave you a big time sci-fi feel. All right. Without spoiling too much for you, what I will tell you is we get a little backstory of where Cap kind of got that that spirit of never giving up. You know where he got it from? He got it from his mom. His mom. He gets it from his mom. He doesn't get it from his dad. We see his dad just... That was hard for me to read. Just watching his dad beat up on his mom. like His mom is just telling him, telling his dad... You know, we need work, and you got to do this. And he's just, bam, just hitting her. And poor Steve, little Steve's underneath uh, the table and just scared. And then he just says to his mom, when she, she's she's like, come on out. And and he says, mom, why didn't you give up? Why didn't she gives him the, the, the speech? Because you don't give up. Never give up. You stand up. And I was like, so that's, okay. So if So that's, if Mr. Remender, that's what you're trying to say, where Steve gets that, that never die attitude from? You don't, um, he's celebrating his 90, his 90th birthday, him and Sharon. Sharon tells him that S.H.I.E.L.D. has found a, something I don't want to spoil. It's kind of how he gets to the Dimension Z. Who is running Dimension Z? Nobody than Armin Zola. But it was really good. Armin Zola just was, is, it was crazy. Just seeing a lot of stuff that was going on. It made you really feel for Steve what, what you saw what Armin Zola was doing to him. Ouch. Very much. That's all I can say. Ouch. But for the first issue, very good. I was very impressed at what Rick Miranda did. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to the table and it, how Steve is going to get back to the 6 and 6 universe, you know, and things like that. Um, but yeah, he's trapped in um, Dimension Z. Uh, but yeah, very good. Um, I did not, I was a little bit kind of a little bit let down on how Cap gets to Dimension Z. But other than that, it was good. All right. Captain Marvel number seven. Kelly Sue DeConnick. Okay, I was wondering if this was going to come up in some time, and I was right. I, it did. So, Carol is out in New Orleans. She's helping out somebody. We don't know who it is at first um, until once they, she comes back up and we see who it is. It's Monica Rambeau, a.k.a. Photon Pulsar, a.k.a. Captain Marvel. Yes, so... Monica has a pretty much a, she's kind of like, you should have told me, you know, you should have told me, you should have told me, you know, why didn't you tell me that you were going to use the name? And they, I love how to get into it. Like, Monica, please, like, you haven't used the name Captain Marvel. It was not yours to give. You haven't used the name Mar uh, Captain Marvel for how long? Miss Photon, Miss Pol Polar. Pulsar, you know, everything like that. And, oh, this coming from Ms. Ms. Cap, Ms. Marvel slash Warbird slash Binary Danvers. And touche. I thought that was really funny. But 
in a sense, I can understand Monica's kind a little bit, but then I'm like, you know what? Carol's right. She's got a point. Monica, you haven't used the name since you were part of the Avengers. Okay? And, you know, but other than that, it's it was a good piece of story. She's down there helping Monica. Um, look, she's, I don't know, in, in a sense, it's like they're, she sees a, like a graveyard of sh like planes and ships and everything, and, and I guess that's what she's using, Monica's using Carol for, but um, we still, it was, what I did love about what Ke Miss Kelly Sue did was she brought back up Monica's kind of claustrophobia of the water, and I, once I saw that, I was like, I knew right from the get-go what she was talking about, I was like, Leviathan, I was like, yeah, and I was like, I was like, oh, thank you, Miss Kelly, I can't believe you, you brought that back up, it, yeah, there was a sea serpent in Avengers 231, I believe, way back. Monica battled it, and it almost killed her. It, it, uh, and she's gonna have a, she's got a fear of going underwater now because of that. So she's kind of like claustrophobic, you know, got a kind of phobia of the water in a sense. But uh, I loved how Monica used her powers um, when she was helping Carol because Carol was like, I need some help. And she, she, it, it was really cool. But other than that, it was it was fine. Um, it was good to see Monica Rambeau. Um, I wish she was in a, a, a book. Hopefully, maybe she'll be in that that uh, Fearless Defenders book, that all-female team, maybe. Be good. But other than that, it was still great to see Monica Rambeau, Fulton, you know, or whoever, however, whatever her name is. But she just goes under Monica now. And um, Miss Kelly Sue still does a very good job with uh, Carol. I'm just hoping there's a there's a trend in the end of the book. We see something that Monica, I mean uh, Monica and Carol, are gonna face. And I'm hoping that won't be the trend for the book. Miss Kelly Sue um, is that. I don't want to spoil it, but I'm hoping that won't be a trend for all her book. You know, for the next issues. But other than that, it was still good. All right. Daredevil, number 20. If I would, I'd be lying to you guys if I didn't tell you. This is probably one of the best books on the Marvel lineup. One of them. Wade has done such a brilliant job with the man without fear, Daredevil. Um, I can see why he won that Ernstine Award. Good stuff. Um, so, Daredevil... He's got his head lobbed off in a scent by somebody called Coyote. Daredevil believes it to be the spot, just in a new persona and got a little bit more edgier. Maybe, maybe not. But Daredevil knows he has to keep this guy talking so he can move his <laughs> his headless body to find out where he is and everything like that. I don't know how he's doing it, but it, it's working. Um, but yeah, it was real good, still fine. Um, we, we figure out who's been messing with Matt's head. Why, uh, in a sense, remember Matt, in a couple of issues before, people have been thinking Matt's gonna be going crazy. You know, why did Matt dig up his father's remains from his gravesite? You know, why he's saying his ex-wife is, but it, it, it everything was true, but the coyote's been playing with him, sending him through the portals, sending everything like that through the port, his portals to play with Matt. And, uh, but it was still good nonetheless. Um, like you can see the cover, like you can see some of the cover, like people with headless. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to spoil too much. But the question really, is coyote the spot or someone else using the spot's abilities because we ah, I don't want to spoil that but uh, other than that it was still good okay Hawkeye number four what's on the tape what's on this tape it seems that Hawkeye there's a tape out there with Hawkeye on it killing a 
assassinating somebody. Shield lost that tape, and now it's somewhere in the hands of somebody in Mandrapore. Hulk Clint goes to Mandrapore because it's going to be auctioned off. So everybody is there. You name it: Kingpin, the Madam Mask, uh, Hydra, Aim. You name it. They all want this tape. Clint has to go there to find it, and it doesn't go well. Um, however, in the auction, Madam Mask gets the tape. She she gets the money to she bids the highest to get it. However. That's the end right there. I'm gonna spoil. I'm not gonna spoil who, who you thought was Madam Mask wasn't. End it right there. And that's pretty much all this is. Um, I think it's a. It, it was a mission because the the Kate, Kate Bishop, you know, female the female Hawkeyes was asking Clint. Clint, have you ever killed somebody? And so, and I guess this is bringing up some of his secret Avengers adventures or so. But this tape. Yeah, this VHS, yeah, going retro, guys, uh, has something to do with it. Give Fraction credit. Like I said, he's not writing Hawkeye. He's writing Clint Barton, and that's why it's been pretty good to me. But if you ask some other people, like my mentor, <laughs> they'll say something otherwise than that. All right, so we keep moving on with some more uh, stuff from number ones I was looking forward to this as well the indestructible Hulk number one I gotta get used to that name the indestructible I've always known the Hulk as being the incredible Hulk Mark Wade and Leland Yu first of all Leland Yu's artwork is great uh, Mark Wade yes very good. Very good for the first issue. Bottom line is, this kind of gives us a notion of why the Hulk, what makes the Hulk a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Remember remember how it was? this was all being built up? She, Hulk, agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Now we understand why. Bruce Banner, a.k.a. the Hulk, has realized something. Reed Richards... Tony Stark and all those guys, they use their he's he's just as smart as them. And they use their their smarts to help people and everything like out. He wants that. But also he tells Maria Hill, like, look, look, I can help. I can help you. I can the Hulk can be a, a you know, just a, a something for good. We could just push him in the right direction. In a sense, and that's kind of what it is. The first, they, his not is his, not his first official, but he does help Shield uh, take down the Mad Thinker in this, and it was really good. Um, I really enjoyed it very much. Um, and then I love how Maria Hill is just like, "Okay, you're hired. You just got to fill out some paperwork." But on, not only that, Bruce has been able to build some things as well that will help people. So, and so, but in a sense, he realizes that they give you a little bit of detail into the, you know, um, the Phoenix and everything, you know, that, during the the X, X Avengers versus X Men that the Hulk was there and everything like that. And but then once Maria Hill's about to mention Tony Stark, Bruce kind of loses, like Tony Stark, like. In a sense, you can understand that, like he he wants to help. So that's kind of how Bruce becomes an agent of Shield. But he doesn't he doesn't have his first official Shield mission yet. But um, it was really good. Wade did a very good job. And this was another book that I was looking forward to because of the fact that what Wade did on Daredevil, I was looking to see what he could do with the Emerald Giant. And he did not disappoint me at all. Very much. Yeah. Good stuff.
Iron Man number two, Gillian, and you know who. Um, basically, as always, we, we know, as you all know, the extremist armor, the extremist formula, the extremist virus is being sold on the black market. The creator of it, Maya Henson, I believe her name was, has been killed. Tony vows to find who's been, who, who stole it, stop them. And he does. He, well, he, sort of he does. He finds somebody who has it. And this person is trying to say, well, we don't call it the extremist. We call it the grail. And, you know, Tony's like, whatever it is, I'm, you're not going to use it. So the guy is like, okay, what if we make a deal? If we can beat you in in a sense in kind of fair combat we can keep in a sense and that's where it comes with tony takes on four of the members of the extremists who have the virus in them and uh let's just say tony's able to beat them and that's pretty much what it is it was very interesting indeed but uh yeah uh besides that tony's armor his new armor he, it's able to it's called the molecular armor now. That's what they call it. It's able to change with, you know, battle conditions. Like, he, he can change with any kind of battle conditions. And so that's pretty much it. All right. Uh, Journey into the Mystery, number 646. Um, this is... As you can see, who's on the cover? My Lady Sif. Yes, Lady Sif now is in this book. And this is written by Catherine Emonet. Uh, Emonet, I believe that's her name. Um, I'm glad to see Marvel is really starting to have more female writers writing books now. That's very impressive to me. I really enjoy that a lot. Um, this is a very good intake of innocence we get more of an in-depth feel of what makes Lady Sif tick and what, how does she look at herself as a warrior as well. And I like that. I thought that was really good. Um, and how she feels that, how she can improve herself even more um, without spoiling too much. That's pretty much the basis of this first issue in a sense. But I thought it was very good. Um, I thought uh, Miss uh, Imonet, Imonet um, I hope I'm saying, I'm probably butchering that name. Uh, she did a very good job of telling who Lady Sip is. Good stuff. All right. So I hope you guys have been still with me. Just a few more Marvel. Don't worry. I'm almost done. <laughs> the final part to... Minimum Carnage, uh, Minimum Carnage, uh, Omega, Yosh and Colin Bunn. Oh boy, um, this ends. This was action packed. Just put it like that. Um, Flash and Kane are just fighting for their lives and and just trying to keep the city of Houston from falling into a panic, as well as just trying to make sure that Carnage doesn't succeed in well he's 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 basically caused mass hysteria but caused a massive genocide in a sense. Um and that's pretty much it. But it was just action packed from start to finish. Um I the Oh boy, I don't want to spoil it. Ah, you know what? I'm gonna spoil it. I'm sorry. Something bad happens to Cletus Cassidy in this. Oh, my God. Kane. You know, Kane has those stingers in his room. Kane literally lobotomizes Cletus Cassidy. Took the stinger and shoop, right in his head. Classity is out. Like, 
Flash comes and grabs Kane. He's like, what are you doing? Like, why did you do that? And Kane goes in and says, how many people has he killed? And everything like that. How many people died because of him? And Flash was like, there has to been another way. There had to been another way. Kane just webs off and, well, yeah, well, when there is, you tell me. That's This is how the book ends, guys. I'm telling you right now. Basically, the doctor is telling Flash, Venom, Agent Venom, did you hear what I said? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, my mind is somewhere else. It, Mr. Cassidy has healed well, but he is chronic the lobotomized. You see, like, drool just coming out of, you know, Cassidy's mouth. However, the symbiote is still in his blood system. In, in his blood system. And now, basically, whatever kind of morals or what was humanity that Cassidy brought to the table is gone now. The symbiote now, the alien host, symbiote is in full control of Cassidy's body and you see the symbiote smiling and that's and then that's where Flash is now that just makes him more dangerous than ever and yes indeed that makes Carnage more dangerous because there's no kind of humanity behind him anymore that may give Cassidy's a psychopath but even at some best sometimes there is a little bit maybe a smidgen of humanity in there not anymore Overall, the Minimum Carnage uh, story arc, I enjoyed. It was good to see Carnage back. Um, and, and, and it just focused on two characters, two main characters, Kane and Venom. Ultimate Spider-Man, number uh, 17. Um, this is basically Miles, along with Spider, Spider-Woman. Ultimate Spider Woman. They are in the you know the United We Stand story arc is still going on. The president, aka Captain America, yes, Steve Rogers is the president of the United States in the Ultimate Universe. <laughs> um and they're battling the forces of the ultimate Hydra in this for you know just trying to get back the United States and everything like that. Um, and that's pretty much the main focus of it, and the team up between these two being partnered together. Um, that's pretty much it. It's nothing too special, but we get to see a little bit of um, what, what's going on with Miles's mother and father. But other than that, it was it was fine. Yep. Okay. Wolverine and X-Men number 21, the strangest heroes of all time. <laughs> Aaron still does a good job on this. Brubaker, Bradshaw's artwork. Uh, once again, like I said, it it has grown on me. I accepted it. Uh, the circus is here. The kids of the Jean Grey School of High Learner are like, where are all the teachers? Hey, where are all the teachers? Where is Professor, where's Professor Grey? Where is this? We find out where they are. They have been literally brainwashed and thinking they're part of a circus. This this circus. And uh, it's up to the kids to find out, to get them back, in a sense. And who is behind it and everything like that. And we find out a little bit more of one of the members of the Hellfire Club, who he his, his family legacy comes from and he doesn't like it not gonna spoil that but uh other than that still good and looking forward to where this goes but uh don't want to spoil too much for you guys with uh Wolverine and X-Men I thought it was funny seeing Wolverine as a clown though <laughs> and last but not least X-Factor 247 Peter David I don't even have to say it you should already know it by now 
so this picks up now this is basically picking up what happened between Layla should I call her and and Jamie Madrick they got married <laughs> they got married they're married they now officially married so I don't know if I should call her Layla Miller Madrick Madrock or, or not but they got married in Vegas all of a sudden we find out there are a lot of cool a lot of people dying historical figures in a sense that are like ministers of chapels being killed off getting their heads copped off and we find out who it is it is a believe it or not General Robert E. Lee yeah on that cover that cover basically so it's Jamie finding out fighting a, a Robert E. Lee um, a dead Robert E. Lee and he's killing people he's killing Lincolns and it's so funny because he's he, he, he it's really him and he's really disappointed and basically you know like you know he's he's like I can't believe they're making such a big deal out of this Lincoln they're saying that he's this he's that they even made him a vampire hunter and I was like oh. <laughs> um but uh it was still fun. This was a fun issue. Um, I loved how Jamie was like, for the last time, the South will not rise. And he was like, oh. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it was really a undead Robert E. Lee killing. Jamie was like, I, I, you gotta be kidding me. Like when he saw it for the first time. Um, but Peter David still throws us a nice, nice curveball in this, but a very good curveball that you enjoyed watching and uh, enjoyed just you enjoyed it basically Peter David's still doing a fantastic job on X Factor and what's to come soon I think this is was a prelogue to what is to come and how did an undead Robert E Lee come back to life all right that's it all right, so we move on to DC. Still with me? I hope you are. Uh, we're going to kick this off with Batwoman, number 14. J.H. Uh, Williams III and Hatton Black. Now, this is still continuing the story arc team up between Batwoman and Wonder Woman. And trying to figure out where Medusa is. Does do they find out where she is? Yes. Where do, am I going to spoil where she is? No. But it was still good. Um, the team up is still very good. I still enjoyed it. And uh, it's been a blast. It was it was a blast. It was a it's a blast seeing Diana and Kate work together, and you get to see kind of. Uh, come chemistry between them as as well as some differences the differences as well in them but overall it was still a good team up they find out where Medusa is from uh, an immortal that he he wants Wonder Woman to kill him because he's immortal but he is so badly wounded up it's going to take forever for his wounds to heal and he just can't take it so pretty much Wonder Woman mercifully um, and that's where we kind of see some of the differences because the, after that Batwoman's like why did you do that like and everything like that but uh, let's just say Medusa doesn't look like the Gorgon that we probably come known to see in like stories you know classic Greek novels and Greek movies like Clash of the Titans and stuff like that. She doesn't look basically you gotta look at her right there. That's kind of what she looks like in a sense. But uh that one is still good. And thank you very much. Alright. Dwayne Straczynski brings us once again Birds of Prey, number 14. Uh the girls are still in um Japan. Um, Katana is still looking for her blade, her sword, the Soul Taker. 
the and we are introduced to this new meta human I guess his name is Condor and he seems to have psychic abilities or so and yeah they're the team fights him and we find out it is he who has Soul Taker and uh, he gives it back to Katana however we are the the daggers this group that has is coming after Katana Katana's like we're not leaving here until we wipe out the entire the entire organization um, in a sense basically that's it however there are some things in here that I don't want to spoil especially between Starling who she calls um, but it, it was still fun it was still good I still enjoyed it um, it was really fun seeing Canary really use her Canary cry more often than this that she's done in the past couple of issues um, but it looks like the next issue is the last issue for Kitana because it's called Sayonara Kitana I guess that's where she, either she leaves the group and we get ready to see her go on the Justice League of America um, as well and but we do know there's somebody that's going to replace her and um, you should already know who that is soon. But other than that, um, this was still fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing how Katana, she, her exit from the team. I always like to see how people exit from the team. Uh, two more issues to go before this book is canceled. Uh, Blue Beetle, number uh, 14, Welcome to the Reach. Uh, Tony Bedard tells a good job. Uh, Jaime and uh, another... Mem uh, uh, basically, I'm the, I think his name is called Kajara. I believe his name. I can't pronounce, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Are on the Breach World, and they are there. He plans to destroy the Breach World, and that's pretty much the bottom line of it. And Jaime is just like, look, I don't care what we do, but I'm I'm getting home. I'm not. We're gonna survive. This may be a suicide mission for you, but not for me. And that's the basis of it. Um, that's pretty much the basis of it. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I just wanna. I'm hoping Jaime doesn't die, things like that. With two more issues to go because they're ending at 16. DC, don't put, don't throw Blue Beetle into that comic book void. Put him on some other book, you know. Hell, put him on the the young the Teen Titans or something. Jesus Christ. Do something. But don't put them in that void. Like what you guys did with the JSA. The 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 uh the JLI. Yeah, I don't even have to say any more about that. So y'all still get that for doing that. Uh DC presents uh Black Lightning and Blue Devil. You know me guys, I'm Black Lightning, love Black Lightning, one of my favorite DC heroes. Uh, we've, in this book, and now we get a notion of that Black Lightning and the Blue Devil before known each other since high school. And, um, they known each other since high school and they know who each other, they know their, their dual identity. So they realize they have to team up. They, now they know who each other is. The Blue Devil knows that Jefferson Pierce is Black Lightning. Jefferson Pierce knows that I'm forgetting his name right now. Liam, or is is Blue Devil, and he's still they're trying to figure out how is he able to do the things he is. If it's just a a movie costume, how is he able to fly? How is he able to blow fire? How is he bulletproof? Everything like that. And Je uh, Jefferson is like, look. I'm not really big into magic. I can't believe in magic, science, everything like that. Yeah. And then uh, Blue Devil's like, dude, you shoot lightning out of your hand and you can't believe in magic? I thought that was really funny. However, Tobias Whale has made a deal with a, um, a demon known as ne uh, ne Nebiros. Nebiros. I think I hope I'm saying it right. Um, and he's telling Whale, I want the blue one. 
If you help me, I'll help you. Deal? Deal. So it looks like there's still more to come. This is I've been enjoying what they've been doing with uh with Mark uh Anderok and the has been doing and uh, it's good to see two more DC heroes back in the back in the fold now still coming still it's still moving I think it's five parts for that oh uh, boy yes uh, Green Lantern New Guardians number 14 uh, meet the newest Yellow Lantern Kyle Rayner yeah, Kyle's still on his quest to be able to control all the colors, in a sense, as well as um, Tony Bedard still does a very good job. Um, the new army, third army, is not is nowhere to be seen in this, but we do get the, a sense more of what's going on with uh, Carol Ferris um, when she goes back to the, the home world of the, the Star Sapphires. And the Queen of the Star Sapphires, she is not really liking what, what Carol is doing, everything like that. And that's where we also see when they finally realize, okay, look, we'll let you keep your ring. You know, you can still go out and look for your boyfriend because it is a quest of love. What Carol doesn't know is that the Zora man, manned, you know, the, the, the alien race of the star have our league uh, 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 have aligned themselves with those blue faced bastards, the guardians. Now, why is Kyle doing all this? Why is he going around trying to learn all the, you know, master all the colors in a sense? For Ganthet. Yes, it's for Ganthet in a sense. But even Carol tells him, like, look, I understand you're doing this for Ganthet, but even you have to realize, Kyle, that. This could be a lost cause. We can't do anything about Ganthet. What they did, what the Guardians have done to him, lobotomize him, making him just as wicked and stupid as the rest of the... We can't do anything about it. But And so Kyle even says, like, okay, but I'll still help you find Hal and everything like that. But he's able to kind of master the yellow and was kind of good. To see. It was cool to see him in the yellow as well as help our killer row find his way as well like being that he's the last yellow lantern Kyle is like look you the only reason why you you have a little bit of love for Sinestro admit it and he's like I know I don't and you know it's kind of interesting but even it's, it shows that even a yellow lantern a fear lantern has love in his heart um but yeah it was this was good um, this has been very good in my. I've, if if I'd be lying to you if I didn't say, Lantern, the court, and this book has been kind of better than, Green Lantern. I have to say, um, uh, that's just my opinion, guys. Just my opinion, indeed. Uh, moving on. Justice League, number fourteen. Jeff Johns, Tony Daniels. Uh, the Monster of Steel. <laughs> um, I don't know why the monster steel because it seems that Cheetah, when she bit, she's able she was able to pierce Superman's skin, bite him, and turn him into this, as you can see. However, they were able to help Superman, and it is shown that this Cheetah, who is Barbara Minerva, has been bad from the get go. Even though Wonder Woman has always said she was my friend at one point, she was bad from the get go. She, and also she has used other identities, like she's used other identities of previous cheetahs, like Priscilla Rich and everybody like that. And kind of Wonder Woman feels let down, like I can't believe I let my, I let myself get caught up in thinking that, you know, I can change her. And they realized that the cheetah spirit was the one that was corrupted, not Priscilla, not Barbara being corrupted by the cheetah spirit. No, it wasn't that way. Um, it was okay. That was okay. And of course, we get a little bit more of the 
you know, the relationship between Wonder Woman and Clark. Clark takes her to Smallville and shows him where he grew up and things like that. And they're kissing and everything like that. And yeah, Batman's watching it. <laughs> I don't I don't understand. Um But it's that story was but it's still really the Shazam Captain Marvel story that's still the seller of this book. Uh, Dr. Savannah and Black Lightning have now officially, Black Lightning is now looking over the city. I don't know what city, I believe it's, I don't know what city it is, but they're, they're looking and he's like, why are they, why are they, you know, he's seeing a protest going on and Savannah's like, and Black Lightning's like, why are they protesting? Why are they doing this? And he's like, they're probably protesting for their, their, and he's like, oh, so you mean they're slaves? And he goes up and grabs this rich man who that people were protesting about, drops him and kills him right there. And I'm like, same old Black Lightning, Black Adam, Black Adam, just seriously, just literally drops this guy. And then he, he, uh, he's like, slaves, you are no longer slaves anymore. You are free. Your slave owner has been killed. And everybody just flips out. They're scared of this guy. They're scared of him. And he's like, why are they scared of me? So he literally like taps into the magic or I guess Savannah's head or whatever to learn English and stuff. And he's like, why are they scared of me? But still the basis of it is, is trying to find out, to try to find the wizard and everything like that. He does find the wizard, but he also finds out that the wizard has given his last bit of magic and strength to a new champion, Billy Batson. But it was still good. That was the best. That was still Gary Frank's artwork was really good. And that's still the basis of the book. That was still the, the gem of that this book. But uh, next, they're going to they're get into the whole throne of Atlantis, that story arc that's coming, that's going to go through Justice League and Aquaman. Okay, oops, drop my stuff. Ugh. Still with me, guys? Two more. Um, like I said, had a fun week. Um, Tom DeFalco, Nightwing, Lady Shiva. Yes! Strikes. And boy, does she strike. I'll be lying. To, does Nightwing, is, it, is Nightwing able to handle Shiva? No. Does she belittle him? Not really, but she's she's one step ahead of him and when it comes to fair combat. It was a pleasure seeing Shiva in this book. Glad to see Shiva back in DC. You know, um I am a little bit a little kind of disappointed that she's using a lot of weapons now because Shiva is a weapon. She don't need weapons. But other than that. You know, even Shiva realized that she knew right from the get-go who Nightwing was because they met before. She was like, Robin. And he was like, oh, gosh, she knows who I am. Like, and he's like, your skills are improved some. But then, but Dick goes into a fight that she shouldn't have, he shouldn't have gone into because he was injured from a previous fight. He's, his, his, uh, his, uh, his chest was pretty much his, his, was really injured. He had his chest and his ribs taped up a little bit from it. And when Shiva realized that, she, she kind of like was like, like, oh, like, okay. She almost, she basically lets him live in a sense uh, because of that. But it was still great to see. Um, that cover is badass. Um, but it was just a great pleasure to see Lady Shiva. She, um, I'm sorry, guys. I, I geek out when I see Shiva. I'm sorry. I do. I'm sorry. It's good stuff. But it was, it was good. Now they're going to get into the whole, uh, death in the family stuff. Um, next up, Supergirl. Uh, this is still continuing to hell on earth. Um, this guy is a lost Kryptonian. A forgotten Kryptonian, his name is, I guess, 
heel or hell, however you pronounce it. And he's come to Earth. And what it it seems that he has dealt with Superboy already. Now he's dealing with Supergirl. And he's it's almost like he's getting to Supergirl now. Like Supergirl may be changing her mind and believing believing all the preachings that he's been saying to them. Um, however, he was going to kill Superboy. However, Supergirl's like, no, don't kill him. Don't kill him. Like, okay, I won't kill him. And she's like, let me talk to Kal-El. She finally realizes now that Kal-El is her cousin. After 14 issues, she finally realizes, that, yes, Superman is my cousin. He's grown. He's older than me, but yes. Um... She is my, he is my cousin. And he goes to, he needs to talk to her. However, spoiler alert, he, she goes to see Clark as, as Clark. And she just, she opens the door to his apartment as like Clark. And it's like, dun, dun, dun. Like, oh God. Like, no, oh, it was kind of fun. It was kind of interesting. And I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes from there. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing this guy more often, this hell guy, and, you know, what's his purpose and what is he going to do. But he is Kryptonian, I believe. All right. Next up, Brian Azzarello, Wonder Woman, number 14. Okay, so basically, Diana is still looking for... Um, looking for Hermes because Hermes kidnapped the child of Zola that she was protecting. Also, basically, Diana meets another one of her many sisters. <laughs> many, another one of her many, many uh, siblings. She meets her, another sister of her, hers right there, this little girl right here who was once another child of the main player himself, Zeus. You know, Zeus can't, he, you know, he, he can't keep his little friend in his, his pants. He sticks it wherever he wants to. And, you know, you can understand Hera's, like, anger towards him. But she takes, he, she takes her anger out on those that Zeus has, was, you know, was, was uh, hitting it with, you know, <laughs> in a sense, you know. Um, this little girl known as Sama Sam Samaya, I believe that's her name, Somaya, watched Hera just suck the life out of her mom and then kill her. But she came back now and she's able to control the winds and everything like that. But it was a real touching story to see her and, you know, um, her and Diana embrace as sisters and everything like that, and, you know, Diane, she's like, I can help you find, you know, I can, I can help you find Hermes, I can just listen if he talk, and she's like, you could do that, and she's like, yeah, the wind will carry his voice, and you just see her using her powers, and you see all these people, voices from the wind, and she's like, he's that way, and she's like, thank you, sister, and things like that, also, I don't want to spoil the ending of who we see but let me just show you, let me just tell you that there's something big coming to Wonder Woman, and they're gonna come in Wonder Woman. And what else? I'll give you a I'll give you a hint. The characters were created by the King Jack Kirby himself. There you go. Whew, there you go, guys. I hope you guys stay tuned or stayed with me on this. I had, a, like I said, my Thanksgiving weekend was really fun, getting together with the family as well as reading just a lot of comics, and I had a blast very much. Uh, but as always, stay tuned with me now, you guys. As I said before, Triple Threat. Now you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, on Triple Threat. Now um, you can follow me there guys if you want like I said if need be if you need to know where you can find me 
I will leave all the information in the description um, as well. But show some love and respect as well to my mentor, Blue Goblin. And hell, follow him on Twitter too. It's a blast following and seeing what he does on Twitter. Um, you do get to see a different side of me on Twitter, definitely. Yeah. On Tumblr, guys, definitely. Um, but other than that, this is Mom's Learning Kid saying peace, one love, stay tuned, keep real, guys, as always. The Honorable Warrior himself, I will see you guys next week, God willing. Peace.